Thank you, Jessica. Good afternoon. And uh, as she mentioned, I'm Andy Kreiser with the Fairmont Veterinary Clinic in Fairmont, Minnesota. And this past uh, summer had the opportunity to conduct a study with uh, Dr. Mark Wagner on the evaluation. Do, you have a, do I have to hit something for slides? Okay, sorry. Uh, evaluation of Barricade vaccine in pers remic piglets. So the objective of our study then was to compare Barricade vaccination timing in piglets at weaning versus weaning in two weeks post weaning, asking the question, are they equally effective in reducing pers viremia and improving average daily gain? So just a overview then of kind of how the study was conducted. We took uh, pregnant gilts at 90 days of gestation and challenged them to create a pers viremic pig at birth and at weaning to use for this study. Uh, their pigs were weaned at 28 days of age and they're weaned into a smaller nursery research facility. And then on the bottom of the screen, you can kind of see a timeline then, you know, 90 days of gestation is when they're challenged with a 134 virus. Day zero uh, would be considered day of weaning then. They were vaccinated, uh, blood tested, and weighed. Uh, two weeks post weaning, uh, we vaccinated uh, one of the groups a second time and conducted a blood test. Four weeks post weaning, we uh, blood tested, weighed, and challenged these pigs. And then six weeks post weaning was the completion of the study where we weighed and blood tested them one additional time. So then just to give you an idea of the nursery uh, layout where these pigs went to post weaning, uh, there was five pens in the nursery. And you can see we had a control and two treatment groups. And so we were able to space those. So there's an empty pen in between each of our, each of our treatments although it was a common airspace. You can see the feeders and waters placed in there. Now, there was no feed medication during the duration of the study, no water medication was administered, and uh, no mass vaccination, or uh, excuse me, mass treatments uh, to the piglets. So then as far as uh, allocating pigs to our treatment groups, we blocked them by PCR status, or PCR positive first, and then by weight at weaning time, and so we had uh, 14 pigs in a control group. We had 14 that received uh, a vaccination at weaning of two mils of the 173 barricade vaccine intranasally, and then a second group that was vaccinated there as well. And now this 173 uh, vaccine strain that was used is 86% similar to the 134 virus that the sows were challenged with, or the gilts, excuse me, were challenged with at 90 days gestation. And uh, we found that same virus then in these pigs at weaning when we blood tested them. At two weeks post weaning then, one of our vaccinated treatment groups, we boosted with a second two mil internasal dose. And at four weeks post weaning, we challenged them with a 174 virus. And this is to try and mimic uh, a lateral introduction into a nursery uh, you know, during the growing period. And this uh, was 97% similar to the, to the vaccine, the 173 there. And as far as a challenge, it was a two mil uh, internasal dose with material that had a quantitative PCR of 10 to the eight. At six weeks, post weaning then was the completion of our uh, study. And every place you see the, the red star appear there then, uh, where his blood test was taken for PERS PCR testing. And then again, uh, at the points of weaning, four weeks and six weeks post weaning, individual pig weights were collected. So looking at the results then, uh, PCR positive piglets by group, you can see at weaning time, uh, there were seven pigs out of the 42 that were positive. So three were allocated to the control group and two each to the uh, vaccinated and uh, vaccinated plus boosted at two weeks post weaning, the orange and the gray bars there. Then at uh, two weeks post weaning, we see there's no difference uh, between any of, the, any of the groups with four out of the 14 pigs being positive. At four weeks post weaning, we see 100% of the control group there, the, the blue bar being positive, uh, you know, just over 70% of the vaccinated one-time group and then our vaccinated plus booster group was just over uh, 55%. And this is a time point then where we challenge these pigs and you can see uh, at six weeks post weaning, 
we did have a uh, challenge that was uh, effective at creating a positive pace in all the treatment groups. So looking at piglet weight by group then for the different time periods, you can see on the, the vertical axis there is the weight in pounds. On the horizontal axis is our time points of our, our weaning four and six weeks post weaning. Again, uh, you can see these are like 18 and a half pound pigs at weaning at that 28 days. And so they're all real similar at that time point. At four weeks post weaning then, um, the, the control groups leg behind approximately four pounds there, uh, just over 41, 41 pounds on both of our vaccinate groups and like 36 on those controls there. And then at six weeks post weaning, you saw a similar thing where our controls uh, leg behind a little bit on the, the two vaccinate groups. We did run statistics on the four weeks post wean to try and uh, look at, you know, what is that uh, vaccine truly do to a PERS viremic pig at weaning in a low prevalence situation that we had here. And so uh, small numbers, right? We only had 14 pigs uh, in a treatment group. But uh, our controls versus vaccinated one time had a p-value of 0.1 and our controls versus vaccinated plus uh, two-week booster was approaching significance at p's of 0.06. So then looking at that four week time period, the distribution of weight, right? Because that becomes a question of how many lightweight pigs or uh, do you have and what effect does that have at the end of the turn if they were to stay like that. You can see on the, the vertical axis, again, is our weight in pounds on the horizontal axis. We have our groups, we have our controls, our vaccinated one time and our vaccinated plus booster group. And each one of these bars represents an individual pig. And so, uh, if we just would look at 35 pound pigs and lighter at that four week time frame, we have six of the 14 in the control group, four out of the 14 in our, our vaccinated one time group, and then three out of the 14 in our vaccinated and booster group. Then taking that out past our challenge then at the six week uh, time frame, you can see a similar, similar thing, uh, you know, fewer, fewer pigs that are uh, 50 pounds or less in the vaccinated groups relative to the control groups, uh, but just to give you an idea of what the distribution of those weights look like at, at that completion of our study time frame. Now to look at average daily gain, uh, the control group from weaning to four weeks post weaning uh, gained 0.64 pounds a day, where both of our uh, vaccinated groups we're in that 0 0.78, 0 0.79 pounds a day. Then from four weeks post weaning to six weeks post weaning would be that second column of numbers there. So the controls uh, outperformed the, the vaccinate slightly at 1.4 pounds a day versus 1.35 on both of our vaccinate groups. And then the farthest right column there is the from weaning to six weeks post weaning overall average daily gain uh, where the, the controls did like nine tenths of a pound a day versus the vaccinate groups. You know, no difference really there. I just slot shy of a pound a day. So then just uh, a couple discussion points. As I mentioned before, we didn't use any feed or water antibiotics or mass injection to the piglets there. Uh, didn't have any mortality, the morbidity. Uh, we posted some of those pigs at the end of the trial and we didn't have any secondary bacterial pneumonia. And so the question is what effect does uh, that have on, on the data and what you're seeing, seeing that way. We did have a, a rotavirus type uh, lesion in the intestine, so I truly feel as more of a, a straight PERS type infection in these group of pigs. Um, serum was only evaluated for PCRs, so we didn't uh, do any quantitative work that way. Performance measured as average daily gain, and we concluded the trial at six weeks post weaning. So uh, how, would, how would this perform in a, in a larger scale setting on taking these pigs all the way to market? So in conclusion then, there's no difference in average daily gain between one versus two doses of barricade uh, vaccination in this trial anyway. Uh, the vaccinated groups had improved average daily gain versus the controls at the four weeks post wean time period. Both groups, that were vaccinated showed a reduction in PERS viremia, uh, or PCR pig, positive pigs at that four weeks post wean time frame before we challenged them. And then our vaccinated uh, plus boosted at two weeks post wean 
uh, those pigs' weight at the four-week time frame was approaching significantly different from our controls uh, with a p-value of 0.06. So with that, I'd be happy to entertain any questions, and thanks for your attention. Uh, so the question was, what was the wean age of the piglets? Uh, this, they were 28 days of age, so uh, 18 and a half pounds, roughly 20 day old pig, 28 day old pig. Uh, so the question is, uh, Vremia after challenge, uh, yeah, so that six weeks post wean here would be, um, you know, this would be the, the, the challenge is here at four weeks, and then so six weeks post wean or two weeks after that challenge would be the PERS PCR status of those pigs for each of the treatment groups. Oh, the question, oh, so, so a quantitative PCR, no, we just did a, a, a PCR, we didn't do any quantitative on this, yeah. So I think for that uh, table, little bit about six weeks, do you know if there's uh, still a second process or not, compared to the four weeks and the six weeks, those of PCR positive and the last sequencing to see uh, so the question was, uh, did we do sequencing to show that the uh, six-week post-wean uh, positive strain was the challenge dose ultimately rather than the, the 134? And yes, the, it did sequence out as the matched up with the challenge dose, the 174. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.